Hey everybody, this is Hogan Brown from Loon Outdoors, and I'm going to show you a simple smallmouth fly today. I call this Hogan's Summer Smallmouth Pattern. I've tied a lot of complicated smallmouth flies and a lot of different flies for smallmouth over my life, and this one is consistently the first one that I pull out of my box, and it usually catches the most fish. It's basically a glorified woolly bugger. Kind of tells you a lot about how good a woolly bugger is for many different types of fish species. But this one has got a couple different things, and with a lot of flies, you've heard me say before, that I'm going to be fishing on the bottom, stripped through the rocks, banged around. I need a couple different things. One, I need them to be durable, and two, I don't need them to break my heart when I lose them. So I keep them simple, relatively cheap, and easy to replace or retie. So this one has a basic bully bugger frame, marabou tail, crystal hackle body with a couple rubber legs, and some ice dub over the front. It's a great beginner pattern or a pattern that any veteran tire can fill a box with and know they're gonna catch some smallmouth. Let's get started. All right, so what we're gonna start out with is first thing is the hook. We're gonna tie it on an Eric's Predator Stinger hook in a number two. You can tie this fly on a variety of hooks on a variety of sizes like most of my patterns. This is one of my favorite and I would always recommend for bass a little wider gap and a stiff shank hook. So I'm gonna start with my GSP 50, wrap it down to the back, lay a nice thread base over that hook shank. Gonna take a red painted lead eye, it's gonna be size medium. Now again, you can put on bigger or smaller eyes depending on the depth of water, how fast you want this to sink, but red is that is the color that I've found. I'm gonna set that right on top of the hook shank. Give it a nice figure eight wrap. Wrap it around, kind of cinch it down. Then wrap that thread back. Now for me, I even like to add more weight because I fish this fly right on the bottom, dragging it across. I'm gonna add some size 20 lead-free wire from Hairline. This does a couple things for me. Bulks up the fly and adds extra weight. And I'm gonna wrap this all the way up until that lead eye are tied in. And then I'm gonna leave myself a little spot on the back to tie in my tail. Again, wrap that thread around it to secure it all in. Then I'm gonna take some fiery cinnamon brownish marabou, really the color not incredibly critical, something in the palette of brown. This is J Fair Fiery Cinnamon. I just strip a clump off, tie it right in at the base, clip it, then I'll usually tie in another clump on top to give it a nice bushy tail. Then secure that all in. Next I'll take one strand, one strand of Pearl Flashaboo, trim it off the husk, take it, fold it in half. This is just going to add a little flash to the side, tie that right to the side of the hook. Little flash coming out the tail. Pull that other half over. Tie it right to the other side. Turn your fly. Trim it right even with the tail. And you got nice little flash coming out the sides. 
Next, I'm going to take medium olive crystal hackle. This is by Hairline, one of my favorite synthetics. Great way to get a nice, durable, big thing with this is it's a synthetic. This is not a, you know, chenille with hackle over it type of body on a woolly bugger. This is a synthetic. We just palmer this around, pull those fibers out. Now this is size medium. If you want to do large, large is going to have longer fibers. Small will have smaller fibers. You can even spin a couple different colors together if you want. Um, again, though, with my smallmouth flies and really any fly that I'm going to be dragging along the bottom, I try to minimize the amount of work it takes just because I don't want to cry when I break them off in the rocks. You'll go through a few of these a day uh, if you're really getting down and after it. Smallmouth fishing. Tie that off. Get up there, trim that excess with those precision tip scissors. Clean it up a little bit if you want, but again, it, it is a bass fly. It doesn't have to be a work of art. Then I'll take two grizzly flutter legs. This is the black barred clear pearl. Okay, take these two. Tie them in right behind the bead chain eyes or the bead eyes. Pull, let it go. Take the other, and these kind of come out like the bottom of the fly, okay? This is gonna be the bottom of the fly realistically, and I'll split them right kind of on the top, just like this, okay? Then I'll take them, Hold those two out and trim them a little shorter than the tail, okay? And you can see once you trim them, they kind of puff right out the bottom. Next, I'm gonna take some ice dub, brown olive from Hairline, little clump, and I'm just gonna use this to create my head. You can use resin, you could use a colored resin to do this as well. Um, but I found with ease and time, just throwing some nice flashy kind of brownish dubbing around figure eight wrap around that head is just as good. There we go. Again, experiment with the colors. I know for my fishery, which is mainly the lower Sacramento River and some of its feeder creeks, this is the color. But I also tie it in a brown body olive tail that will work. Tie that off. And who knows what will work in your water. That's one of the beauties of these flies, and really flies in general, is finding that color palette, especially with bass flies, that your fish react to. So I'm gonna take some UV clear fly finish thin, just coat that thread. Let it even soak into that dubbing. Then hit it with the infinity light Turn it on this regal rotary vise and just get it nice baked in there so it's ready to be banged against rocks. There you go. Great smallmouth fly for any time of the year, but I really like this during the summer months, fished right on the bottom. Could be a crayfish, could be a sculpin, could be realistically anything, but it's definitely going to get the attention of smallmouth. Pogan Brown with Loon Outdoors. Have a great day.